Okay. So Lin Chuan Ma is going to talk about multiplicities over local rings, Lex conjecture, and Lim Ulrich sequences. And this is the first of a weekly series um, co-hosted by a bunch of people whose names you've seen on the various advertisements, I guess. Um, so I'm eager for this first talk. Lin Chuan is going to try to give an elementary first half and then pose, uh, pause for a little bit. And then we'll have a second half, I guess, of his latest research on this. Anyway, we're ready to go, I think. Okay. So just want to make sure everyone can, can hear me. I certainly hear you well. Ah, okay. Okay. So, so I should just go start. And uh, so, okay. So, so, so first of all, thank you for for inviting me to uh, to give this uh, first lecture. It's my it's my pleasure. And uh, I also, I need to I want to thank the organizing committee maybe to to uh, bring up this new idea of online computer algebra seminar. And uh, so, I. I, the, this is the, the title of my talk, uh, Multiplicities, uh, Lex Conjecture, and Lee Moorish Sequence. So uh, it's going to be a mainly uh, an uh, expository talk. So it's going to be very uh, elementary. And so um, please let me know if, I'm, if my handwriting is, is, is bad or you cannot read from, from the, the screen, if I'm writing too small. So, um, uh, so first of all, let me set up some Hello, I'm sorry for interrupting you. This is Irina. I, I can't read the top row of your writing, so I would ask you to slide the page down. Yep, sure. that's perfect. Is it better? Now it's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, so throughout, throughout this talk, uh, all rings, are uh, commutative Noetherian uh, and uh, with multiplicative identity one. Um, and all modules uh, will be finally generated. Okay, so I won't, uh, I won't repeat this uh, assumptions, we won't move out of this category. And so let me begin by uh, uh, defining the Hilbert semi of or multiplicities. So RM is a, a local ring of uh, Dimension R is D, and uh, so I let I be an M primary ideal. Uh, an M and uh, R module. So I want to define a numerical uh, invariant, uh, the The Huber Samuel multiplicity of this module M uh, with respect to this ideal I uh, uh, this can be defined as uh, the following uh, limit. So my, not my notation for this is EI comma M, uh, which is the limit N goes to infinity. Uh, d factorial times the length of m mod uh, i to the n times m divided by uh, n to the d. Okay, and so I'm gonna simplify my notation a little bit because mostly we're gonna be interested in the multiplicity of the ring. So m is r and i is the maximum ideal. So uh, I'm gonna use er uh, to denote the multiplicity of M on, uh, on R. 
Okay, so hold on, just gonna move this thing here. And so let me perhaps make a few remarks first. So here is a remark. Oops. So from this definition, it's not entirely obvious that uh, this limit uh, exists, but uh, in fact, uh, this length function, uh, m mod i to the n times m, uh, this is actually a polynomial uh, in n uh, of degree uh, d for n large. Okay, so I guess I, I'm assuming m has dimension d, otherwise this multiplies is just going to be zero. So uh, therefore, so thus um, this invariant, the Hilbert semi-multiplicity uh, is the normalized uh, leading coefficient of this Hilbert Samuel polynomial leading coefficient of polynomial, okay? And so in general, uh, this, uh, this is always a, an integer, uh, and as I said, uh, it's, it's positive uh, if and only if uh, the dimension of the module is is maximum, okay? So if, if otherwise, this we just assign it to be to be zero because the Hilbert polynomial will be of degree uh, smaller than the dimension. Okay, um, and so perhaps let me just here's another uh, remark. So uh, it's sort of obvious from the definition because we are really caring about the, the length of m mod i to the n m. So this number uh, only depends uh, on the associate graded module. Uh, this is just defined to be uh, m mod i, uh, i m mod i square m, da, da, da. So this is a module over the associate graded ring of i, so because you can just, uh, so it, in particular, it, this, uh, it follows uh, that if you want to compute uh, this uh, multiplicity, it doesn't matter, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we can always uh, complete the module where m hat is the m adic or i adic, they are the same, Completion of M. So, uh, so in particular, uh, the multiplicity doesn't change if you the multiplicity of R uh, is the same as the uh, R hat. Okay. So here are some. These these are some very obvious, perhaps, uh, remark. And so now I want to uh, give you uh, lots of examples of this. Uh, Hubert Samuel uh, multiplicities. Okay, so uh, first example, um, we all like polynomial rings. Let's take R to be uh, a polynomial ring in uh, D variables. And M is this maximum ideal, it's a unique homogeneous maximum ideal. And so then, well, sorry, just a small, so technically I have to localize here because this ring is not a local ring, but uh, it doesn't matter because you, you because all we care is about the length. So as long as you take an M primary ideal that all the definitions go through. So I'm just gonna uh, ignore this uh, small uh, distinction. We just gonna work with uh, graded rings or, or just we just specify the ideal. This is gonna be a local invariant. So in this case, uh, these lands are explicit, it's easy to compute, n plus d minus one choose d. So uh, asymptotically as n becomes large, uh, this is one over d factorial times uh, n to the d. Okay, 
So it follows uh, the multiplies this one. Okay, because we, we have to so perhaps just call this because in the definition we uh, we normalize by this factor d factorial. So the uh, leading coefficient is this one. Okay, and in fact, uh, it's uh, it's true that uh, uh, er is always equals to one. Uh, so er is one for all uh, regular local rings. Right. So one way to see this, it, it it's the same computation, or you can you can just argue that the associate gradient ring uh, of a regular local ring is a polynomial. So it's the same computation. And um, so the second uh, class of example, while well, we can look at R is a hypersurface. Okay, so for example, R could be, uh, you have a polynomial ring uh, and you cut out by one uh, equation. And so then in this case, it's not very difficult to show that the multiplicity is nothing but the order of this equation, which is, so this is the degree of uh, the smallest order term uh, of this function f, okay? So for hypersurface, this invariant is pretty uh, straightforward. So once I give you the defining equation, you can read out the multiplicity uh, very quickly. And so then the next, uh, so we have uh, regular rings or we have hypersurface. So now the next we want to ask, uh, well, the, perhaps the next natural class to look at is uh, complete uh, intersections. So let's say R is a K, you will join a bunch of variables and then you cut out by uh, a regular sequence, F1, F2, C, so such that uh, F1, F2, Fc, uh, let me assume they are uh, homogeneous uh, regular sequence of uh, degree uh, uh, D1, uh, D2, Dc respectively, okay? And so uh, in this case, uh, we can, um, the formula is perhaps what you expected. The multiplicity is just the product of this di, okay? And so you see that I put a, a condition, uh, uh, homogeneous equations here, and this is actually uh, important. So here's a perhaps a first uh, sort of caution here. Uh, so if you have a general completeness section, you have uh, not necessarily graded uh, equations down here. So if this fi's are not necessarily uh, homogeneous, so then uh, what happens is that the Huber Simon multiplicity of R is always at least as big as the product of the order, okay? But in general, uh, you could have strict uh, inequality here. This, uh, let me say, frequently happens. Okay. And so let me just perhaps just define this notion here because we're going to come back to this later on in this talk. Uh, so R is called a uh, strict completeness section. Okay. So if the associate graded ring of R is a completeness section. So, so one thing that you uh, you could imagine that this property, uh, I mean, the for complete session, the multiplicity is not uh, what you expected is because, so R could be a complete section, but the associate graded ring is, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's, it's no longer nice, right? Um, and that happens frequently. And uh, 
uh, and so that's and we know the multiplicity is an invariant uh, of the associate graded. So uh, this condition is sort of natural when studying uh, multiplicities. And and in fact, let me just point it out. So this condition, the associate graded ring being a complete intersection, uh, this is actually equivalent to like uh, the equality here. So strict complete intersection happens if and only if R is a complete intersection and the multiplicity is what you expected. Okay, so that's one. Uh, we're gonna come back to this uh, later. And so uh, let's go back to the homogeneous case. In the complete intersection case, the, the multiplicity is, is the product of um, the degrees of these Fs. And more generally, you could, uh, this invariant is closely related to invariants of projective uh, geometry. Suppose you have uh, a project uh, X inside PN uh, is a, uh, projective variety say over over the field k uh, let's say uh, cx uh, inside am plus one is the associated affine cone okay um, so in other words the cx is the spec of some affine ring r so the renal functions on this cone. And so then in this case, uh, the multiplicity of the cone, the multiplicity of R uh, is the degree of the projective variety. Okay, so this extends the, the homogeneous complete intersection case. Um, and for example, the, the multiple, so even if you are just interested in, in studying smooth varieties, uh, the multiplicity does encode information about the smooth variety. So it's, very interesting. Okay. All right. So, so far we we I, I gave you a bunch of examples of uh, the Hubert semi multiplicity, but all the examples that I did so far uh, are the multiplicity with respect to the the obvious the obvious maximal ideal, and you could also do uh, arbitrary. Uh, I, I also want to give you some examples of multiplicity of arbitrary or like. Uh, not necessarily maximal uh, ideals. So um, I start with uh, a polynomial ring. And let's say I is an M primary um, monomial ideal. Okay. And in this case, the Hubert semi multiplicity of I, uh, this is also, uh, there are explicit formulas to compute uh, this, this Tessier's formula. So this is uh, the normalized volume of the complement of the Newton polyhedral. So the convex and this. So where the, so this denotes the, uh, The Newton polyhedral uh, of I. In other words, this is just the, the convex hull of all the uh, integer points um, that corresponds to monomials uh, inside I. This is a uh, convex hull inside the R. Uh, uh, maybe I should say this is this is inside Rn equals zero. And you take the complement of this convex hull here. You got a bounded region, you compute the volume of that region and then you normalize it. So that's uh, the multiplicity in the, in the monomial case. So for example, we can actually uh, compute something very explicit. So, so let's take a polynomial in two variables. You, I just randomly write an ideal, a monomial ideal and primary, uh, I do the four say. And now in, uh, in this case, maybe this is, this is y to the four. Uh, this is x y, and here I have x squared. So you, so this 
is the Newton polyhedral, and then the area or the volume you are interested in is just this this slice, okay? And in this case, uh, the multiplicity is five. It's very explicitly described. Okay, so we discussed uh, monomial ideals in the polynomial ring. There's another class of ideals where this multiplicity are uh, easy to compute. Uh, so let's say I is inside R uh, is generated by a uh, seasonal parameters. I'm going to use the notation x underline, uh, x1, x2, da, 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 xd. OK. And then in this case, it turns out uh, the multiplicity of i on a, on a module. So I'm going to adopt the notation e x underline comma m. Uh, so this multiplicity can be computed using the the order characteristic. So this is uh, chi xm, which is the alternating length of the uh, kazoo homology of, on this system of parameters. Um, I hope, hope you, can, you can see this, OK? So in particular, what's important about this, which is related to the later part of the talk, uh, if the module M uh, is maximal uh, Cole Macaulay, so MCM, right? And so remember, one way to characterize maximal Cole Macaulay module is that uh, every uh, system of parameters is a regular sequence on the module, right? So regular sequence, of course, implies that the uh, kazoo uh, homology uh, Sorry, the, the higher uh, kazoo homology are zero, and so uh, in this in this uh, so in this case in this 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 formula, uh, all the higher terms are going to vanish. So uh, so as a consequence, the multiplicity uh, is just the the zero uh, kazoo the length of the zero kazoo. So which is the length of M mod XM. Okay, so and so next, I want to discuss some uh, basic properties of this invariant. We we have seen some a bunch of examples of this uh, multiplicities and. Uh, so now I want to formalize some of the basic properties. Okay. And so let me let me fix. So R M, this is going to be local, and dimension of R is always D. I'll always work with this setup. And so first, uh, so we have seen that for regular local rings, the multiplicity is one. And uh, the first property is that this invariant really characterizes uh, regularity. So uh, it sort of it's a it's a measure of of singularity. So suppose the completion of R uh, is unmixed. By the way, this is a very this is a very a mild assumption. So for example, if you want to work with excellent domains or you know. Uh, complete domains. This is this is automatic, and so then uh, the multiplicity one, uh, uh, if and only if R is regular. Okay, and so morally speaking, uh, you should view this uh, ER uh, as a measure of how bad the ring is. So uh, maybe I should say morally. Uh, the larger the E, uh, the worse the singularity. Right, so think about the hypersurface example. So it's just the degree of the defining equation. And of course, for a hypersurface, uh, 
the if if you have larger defining de, the defining equation has degree large, then the hypersurface is going to be more complicated. Okay, and uh, second, I want to point it out, which is very important here, that uh, this multiplicity function is is additive. Uh, satisfies uh, the the additivity property. So in other words, if you have a short exact sequence, uh, then uh, the multiplicity of, of the middle guy is the sum of the multiplicity of M1 and M2. And so lastly, I want to uh, mention the connection of this thing with integral closure. And so if I have two ideals, uh, J inside I, and so then uh, EI is the same as EJ. And so it's clear from the definition that the smaller the ideal, uh, the larger the multiplicity because it's the co-length of uh, M modulo J to the N. So if J is deeper then the length is, uh, uh, sorry, I I just realized what does it mean for the completion to be unmixed. So, uh, so I'm not gonna mention uh, get involved into this. So basically, that means the uh, the completion of R has uh, is equidimensional and has no embedded uh, 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 associated prime. So it's it's a it's a mild assumption. That's just assuming the completion is a domain, for example. And um, so where am I? Ah, so if you have two ideals, uh, the, the deeper the ideal, the, the larger the multiplicity, but I want to say that you already have equality uh, if, if, uh, if they have the same integral closure. So if I is, uh, I is contained in the uh, integral closure of J and what's, even more amazing is that this th this property also have a converse. Uh, so if the you need a again you need some small hypothesis if the completion is uh, equidimensional, um, then uh, the same multiplicity implies that they are same up to uh, integral closure. So then E I R equals to E J R. Uh, if and only if uh, I is contained in the uh, integral closure. Okay, and so there are some immediate consequence of this of these properties. All right, so first, uh, this I want to draw your attention to this uh, uh, additivity property here. Um, so additivity implies, in particular, I remember we we have seen or uh, I've told you at the very beginning that this multiplicity uh, of a module is is uh, is uh, positive uh, if and only if. Uh, the module has maximal possible dimension. Um, and uh, so this property in particular that tells you that uh, the multiplicity, it only, only sees the components of maximal dimension. So let me just see components of M of dimension D. Okay, so for example, if, if, if you gave M a filtration and you could have some uh, sub quotients of dimension D, you, sh you, have, you have some other sub quotients of, of dimension smaller than D. And the point is that the additivity easily tells you that uh, those components of uh, dimension strictly, strictly less than D does not contribute when you compute the multiplicity. Okay, and so in particular, 
So if R is a domain, um, and then you have uh, EIM uh, is the rank of M times EIR, okay? Because in this case, if R is a domain, any, let's say for simplicity, let's just assume M is torsion free for in every, in, for every torsion free module, you can, you can embed a free module uh, inside, inside M. Uh, and so, um, and so the quotient is torsion and uh, the torsion module have dimension strictly less than the dimension of R, so they do not contribute. So if you compute the multiplicity of M, that's just the same as the multiplicity uh, of the free module, which is the rank times the multiplicity of R, okay? And, and so now we can also use, I mean, this principle, the multiplicity only sees components of uh, maximal dimension. This also uh, in, it enables us to compute some, some examples. For, so let's say R is K, uh, X, Y, Z, uh, modulo perhaps X intersect Y square comma Z. So this is a, a ring and it has two minimal primes, namely X and Y, Z, but you see that this other minimal prime is of the wrong dimension. It has dimension one, while the ring has dimension two. And so this additivity property tells you this ER, well, or this principle just tells you ER, you only, what really matters is the, uh, is the uh, component of maximal dimension. So ER is ER mod X. But modulo X, the ring is a polynomial ring. So it's E K X Y, which is one. So this ring has multiplicity one, but obviously R is not regular, but R is not regular. So that's why uh, I come back to this. I mean, the, the, this, uh, this mild assumption is actually necessary because uh, this otherwise is an example. Okay, so finally, uh, this is gonna be in connection with the integral closure thing. If the residue field is infinite, okay, and then we know that every M primary uh, ideal I uh, is integral over uh, an ideal generated by persistent parameters. So X, which is X1, XD. So this is called uh, a minimal reduction of I. So in general, this choice is not unique, but the point is that you can always, you can always find a, uh, 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 system of parameters such that your ideal is integral over that. And so therefore, uh, so EIM is the E of, uh, of this uh, system of parameters. Um, but for system of parameters, remember we can compute using uh, the computer multiplicity using the order characteristic, okay? And so, Basically, this tells you that, in fact, the Hubert semi multiplicity can be always computed by uh, the order characteristic, the order characteristic of some uh, seasonal parameters. And so, for example, the the additivity property here really corresponds to the additivity of the the order characteristic. Turns out. Okay. And so now I want to move on to the to the central question that I'm going to study for uh, for today. Uh, so we want uh, to study the behavior of the multiplicity under flat, under flat maps, okay? And there are two types of flat maps that, that, that comes up frequently. So the first one, a localization map is flat. So a localization, so R to S, which is R localized at a prime. And the second type of flat maps are uh, faithfully flat maps. So this localization is not faithful. 
So, um, can I write a bit larger? Sure. Sorry. Thanks for uh, for reminding me. So the second type of thing is the flat local map. Um, R M to S M. Okay. So this is equivalent to faceplate flat. And so I, uh, a basic question is. Uh, how does the multiplicity behaves under this under this uh, under this base change, and for localization? Uh, so keep in mind that the philosophy is that, as I tell you, that this number, the multiplicity, is a measure of how bad the ring is. is a measure of similarities, and so for localization, so the philosophy should be the the singularities. Let me let me perhaps write so singularities of R P. Uh, should be no worse than uh, than the singular than that of R. Okay. So, for example, uh, so whatever properties or reasonable properties you want for the ring, you usually you want uh, this property to be preserved under localization. So, if R is regular or comma Kali, or if you have in characteristic zero rational singularities. Or if you are in characteristic P, strongly uh, F regular, da da da, right? So I'm not going to define this because I, I I won't use this thing. So then, so sorry, uh, so so is the uh, localization, All right? So therefore, uh, the natural uh, expectation here uh, is that because this is a measure of singularity and the larger the worse, so you expect this to be uh, bigger than the multiplicity of our localized, localized P. Okay, and so we can actually formulate this into a uh, into a a a, uh, a conjecture. So localization uh, localization formula. So um, so I have a local ring, and I have a prime ideal, um, such that you need mild assumptions. Turns out, so you need the dimension and co-dimension of p. They add up correctly. So the height of p plus the dimension of r mod p is the dimension of r. So I mean, otherwise, actually, we already see a counterexample. For example, uh, this example here, uh, you. Consider the ideal y z. So that's look, after localization, x becomes a unit. So the multiplicity becomes two. But this ring has multiplicity one. So you do need some some mild assumptions like this. You need the dimension and co-dimension add up uh, correctly. And then uh, e r is bigger than or equal to e r p. Okay. And then this this is a famous theorem of Nagata. In the 1960s, I believe. So this this conjecture actually holds uh, the the localization formula holds uh, at least when R is excellent. Which is I'm not going to define this, but uh, perhaps uh, this includes all the reasonably nice rings. It includes all the complete rings, uh, all the Finite type or essentially finite type algebras, um, and literally all the examples that we can we can write down. Okay, so this is a highly non-trivial result because, uh, for instance, if uh, so, if you remember that multiplicity one characterizes uh, regularity, so so this gives a proof, for example, that localization of regular rings are are regular without using the homological methods, and this. Vastly generalize that because uh, because this is a numerical invariant, other than just saying that this is one. Okay, so now I want to turn to the second type of uh, uh, flat maps, so which is flat local map. So for flat local map, R M to 
as n, again, there's a natural uh, expectation, right? So this time the philosophy says, whatever properties that S have, you, you expect that R also have the same property. Um, and so maybe let me just write the, the philosophy is that the singularities of S, oh, sorry, of R should be better, should be no worse. Uh, than the singularity of S. Okay, and so uh, example again, some of these are not 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 trivial. If S is regular, comma Macaulay, or rational singularities, uh, or strongly F regular, da da da, depends on what kind of car car uh, category you work with. So then, so is R. It turns out some of, as I said, some of these are not uh, obvious. So this time, uh, the natural expectation is that the multiplicity should not uh, drop. So the multiplicity of R should be less than or equals to the multiplicity of S. And this is precisely uh, the conjecture of Lack. Lex conjecture formulated in the 1960s. Okay, so it's a long-standing uh, conjecture. Uh, so let Rm to Sn be a flat local extension. Uh, then the Hilbert semi-multiplicity does not drop. Okay. And of course, let me just say, so what are examples of flat extensions or flat local extensions? You could imagine like uh, S is just a polynomial ring over R or a power series over R if you want local, or S could be any finite free uh, extension of R. So these are examples. And you can put stronger assumptions on the map uh, too. So for example, if S is really R adjoining a power series uh, or like in general, if, if uh, if the map is formally smooth or things like that, then you can easily show that the multiplicity are the same. So the conjecture holds in that case. And for flat maps such that the closed fiber is a complete intersection, uh, then in that case, the conjecture also holds uh, this proof by lack. Okay, so maybe let me just so remark for LCI maps, this is true. Uh, by lack. Okay. So, and so slightly stronger conditions on the map uh, easily tell you that this, uh, this uh, uh, inequality holds. And so now I want to survey on what was known on this conjecture. So uh, Lex conjecture uh, is known. Uh, in the following cases. So first, so this is due to lack in the 1960s. The conjecture holds if the dimension of R is at most two. And the second big case, uh, let me just attribute this result to uh, Backlin, uh, Jorgen uh, Herzog, and uh, Urich. This is proven in the 90s that uh, if R is a strict complete intersection. Remember, we already defined this before. Uh, a typical examples of all these are, are standard graded uh, complete uh, intersection. And then uh, a few years ago, uh, I proved the conjecture when the base ring has dimension three uh, in equal characteristic. And let me also mention that, uh, so Bern Herzog uh, in the 1980s and 90s, he obtained a series of results on uh, Lex conjecture, but his approach is to, uh, is to put conditions on the closed fiber under various uh, assumptions on the closed fiber. Okay, so which are, 
it's a strong, it's my understanding is that they are pretty strong assumption and it's technical to fit here. So uh, let me just skip this. So, okay. And, and so what can be said in general? So if we do, if, I mean, so Lex conjecture predicts that you have uh, multiplicity R less than multiplicity of S. And so in general, uh, if, you, if we are not that ambitious, we can at, at least uh, obtain some bounds of the multiplicity of R in terms of multiplicity of S. So if R to S is flat local, then uh, lack proved that uh, multiplicity of R is less than or equals to D factorial times the multiplicity of S where D is the dimension. And and I generalize this in the equal characteristic case. So ER is less than or equals to maximum of D factorial over two to the D and one uh, times the multiplicity of that. So basically I, uh, oh, sorry, uh, when R has equal characteristic. In other words, when R contains a field. So. And so let me uh, perhaps comment on, uh, um, the method used involved uh, in this series of results. So Lex result and Bernd Herzog result, they depends on some very uh, technical and uh, delicate analysis on the on the behavior of uh, Hubert functions or Hubert polynomials on, on R and S. And I want to draw your attention to this, uh, this result here. So the approach here is to use uh, Urich module, which I'm gonna, uh, which gonna be the next topic for today. And here, the uh, my method is to use a positive characteristic method and reduction mod t. And so we're gonna come back to that later. And so uh, let me, perhaps I'll just do it here. So let me just mention something about uh, Urich modules. Okay. And so recall that we already uh, show this actually. So if M is, a maximal co macaulay module, then uh, for every system of parameters x, the multiplicity is the uh, order characteristic, which in this case, since uh, m is co macaulay it's just the, uh, the zero of kazoo. So we have exm it's just the length of m mod xm. But this one clearly is bigger than or equals to uh, m mod, uh, ah, sorry. Uh, we, have, we have this, sorry, I'm just being too fast. And so now, so now if x is a uh, minimal reduction of uh, the maximum ideal, Okay, so then uh, we're gonna have the multiplicity of M with respect to the maximum ideal uh, is the same as you replace the maximum ideal by its minimum reduction because that's integral over this. But then this is the same we already see is M mod uh, uh, M, uh, X times M. But this is at least I claim is quite obviously the nu of m, which is the, the minimal number of generators. Because the minimal number of generators of m is just, is m mod the maximum ideal times m. Okay, so for maximal co macaulay modules, the multiplicity is always bigger than or equal to the minimal number of generators. And we already, we can, we can actually prove this using the basic properties. And here comes the, the definition of a Urich module. So, um, so um, M is called a uh, Urich module uh, over R. If first M is, you want this to be a maximum co macaulay module such that uh, you have you have equality here. Okay. 
such that the multiplicity is the same as the minimal number of generators. And so let me uh, put up here, here. So, so the reason that this uh, UH modules are, are important uh, to, to us, to this uh, conjecture of lack, is because of this following uh, observation uh, of uh, Hoxter, Hunicke, and also maybe I should put Hainus here. So that basically that, that, that says if, I mean, uh, that uh, the observation is that uh, Lex conjecture holds uh, for for, uh, for R to S if R admits a uh, Urich module. Okay, and so actually the the I call this observation, but the, so the proof is actually pretty. Pretty easy. So let me uh, well, perhaps put some cautions here. Well, at least uh, if R is a domain. Right, so in general, the observation you, sh you should say like every minimal prime. So R mod every minimal prime uh, has a Urich module. So, but let me just just quickly uh, tell you uh, why is this observation holds. So uh, uh, sketch. Of proof, okay, and so uh, in order to prove this uh, lax conjecture, there are some standard reduction that we can make. Uh, so we can first complete, so first complete, and then you can use the uh, localization formula uh, to assume that uh, the two rings that involved uh, have the same dimension. So basically, you localize S at a prime that lies over the maximum ideal here. So, and then replace S by S localized at Q. And the, we already know the multiplicity does not uh, increase under, under localization. So you can just do that. So you, you may assume dimension R uh, is the same as the dimension of S. And now, so then, uh, so I let U be a Urich module uh, over R. And so then uh, the multiplicity of R, uh, well, remember for simplicity, we are, we are just assuming R is a domain. So the multiplicity is just the multiplicity of the module divided by the rank of the module, okay? But then the Urich condition tells you that the multiplicity is the same as the minimum number of generators. So this is nu of U divided by the rank of U, okay? But then the minimum number of generators does not change under flat base chain. So this is the same as the minimum number of generators of U tensor S divided by the rank of U, okay? But then, so here's why we need uh, this uh, reduction because, so if U is maximum Kolmogorov over R, then you do a, a flat extension of the same dimension, then this module is still maximum Kolmogorov over S. So for maximum Kolmogorov module, we already see that the minimum number of generators is always bounded above by the multiplicity. So this is less than or equals to E n u tensor r with s divided by the rank. But this is precisely the uh, the multiplicity of s. Again, this this by the additivity formula. Okay. So this is a simple uh, argument. And uh, let me uh, quickly survey what was known on Urich modules, and then I will come to a short break. So you might hope, okay, this using this observation, we can we can try to prove Lex, Lex conjecture by by uh, by constructing Urich modules for for the source for, for R. But unfortunately, the existence of Urich modules is known in in uh, only in in very limited uh, cases. So uh, Urich modules. Are known uh, in the following cases. So first, uh, if the ring has dimension at, at, at most one, so this is easy. If you can, if you are boring, you can just try this as an exercise. And second, let me attribute this to uh, Brennan, uh, Jurgen, 
Herzog and Urich. This is in the 1980s. Uh, so even if it goes up to dimension two, these things are uh, not easy to construct at all. So if R is a standard graded, so this just means ungraded and generated by degree one forms, co-Macaulay domain of dimension two uh, with uh, infinite residue field. So then in this case, they construct uh, these Urich uh, modules. And third result, as I said, uh, Backlin uh, Jürgen uh, Herzog and Urich, um, R is a strict complete intersection. Okay. So these are so far as so far as I know, the most uh, uh, class of rings or, or, or general rings that uh, the Urich modules are known to exist. And there are some other results that I want to mention here. So the, these modules are usually constructed. So usually you can, you can, you can uh, construct them if your ring uh, exhibits some strong uh, or like have uh, coming from combinatorics or have strong combinatorial property. So this uh, due to Eisenbach, uh, Schreier and Wayman uh, that uh, they construct these Urich modules when R is a Veronese subring uh, of a polynomial ring. Okay. And another class of rings that people study frequently is the determinantal rings. And this is due to Brown's. Romer and uh, Weiby in the 2004, uh, they constructed Urich modules for generic determinantal rings. So that's the ring of, uh, you start with a ring of uh, uh, n by n matrix, uh, sorry, uh, n by n matrix of variables and then you modulo the t by t minus. Things like that. And I guess, so, 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 so these constructions are are not uh, are not are, are actually hard. Both of these are hard results, and they uh, they involve a lot of uh, combinatorial or, or representation theoretic methods. And I guess maybe some of these also needs characteristic zero. But I just want to uh, mention that these are uh, uh, very difficult to to construct. Okay. And also, let me also mention perhaps uh, so geometrically. Uh, so if you have a projective variety over uh, inside uh, Pn, uh, so then graded uh, Urich modules on the affine cone, on the affine cone, the Cx, remember this is inside A n plus one. Okay, so these uh, corresponds to the so-called uh, Urich sheaves on the projected variety. So geometers usually like to, to study uh, Urich sheaves. They, are, they, are they, they, they can be de de uh, defined using the vanishing of uh, sheaf cohomology of, 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 of uh, certain sheaf cohomology, but it, it actually equivalent to the uh, uh, Urich module on the, on the cone. So, but this is, if you, if you like, this is actually Urich bundles uh, the Urich sheaves are actually the same as Urich bundles if X is smooth. Okay, and there are, there, are, there, are, there are many, many results or papers on constructing uh, Urich bundles even for smooth uh, surface in characteristic zero. And even in that case, as far as I understand, they, uh, they have to put strong geometric conditions on the surface in order to uh, construct Urich bundles. So this is a very difficult uh, question. And Perhaps, uh, so the existence of Urich modules, unfortunately, is, is known in very limited cases, but maybe I should point it out even more unfortunately. So uh, this is a very uh, recent result. Uh, very recently, uh, Farah E, who's a current graduate student of Mel Hoxter, uh, she constructed a complete 
local domains uh, of dimension two that uh, does not uh, have Urich modules. So in general, Urich modules uh, do not exist in general. Okay, but let me also perhaps I but uh, the question. So I I I my understanding is that her examples are not uh, co Macaulay. So so the question is still uh, wide open uh, for co Macaulay rings. So personally, I I'm not very optimistic, but. Uh, even if the answer is yes, I so given all these results that we know, uh, the construction are ought to be very very difficult. So, okay. so I guess that's the first part of my talk. So, uh, do we want to uh, stop for a second, or or I can just continue? Uh, I can just go ahead. And so, sorry, this this second part of the talk, uh, and so uh, I need I need to. So, uh, so so far we have uh, I introduced this Urich modules. This uh, uh, this is one way of attacking uh, Lex conjecture, but their existence is not known in general, and it's very hard uh, very hard to construct, uh, even for nice class of rings. And so now the idea uh, that I'm going to introduce today is to uh, use a much weaker variant of uh, Urich module. Uh, which we call it the lim urich sequence uh, to prove Lex conjecture for a large class of rings, actually. So this is a theorem that I proved a couple uh, months ago. Uh, sorry. So let R to S be a flat local extension, the setup of uh, Lex conjecture. And suppose R is a standard graded ring over a perfect field. Um, so you have to make it local. Uh, and then, so by the way, standard graded means uh, uh, is n graded and generated uh, by the degree one forms again. Okay, and so then in this case, the multiplicity uh, the next conjecture holds. Okay, and so uh, in order to prove this theorem, we we can assume uh, the, the the field K has characteristic P by a by a standard uh, argument. Uh, so we're just going to assume that for the rest of the talk, but most of the theory uh, works uh, in general. Okay, so you don't have to really uh, work with character P. So in order to define this lim ruich sequence, we need the notion of uh, lim uh, co macaulay sequence. Uh, this was developed by uh, uh, Bath, uh, Hoxter, and myself. So here's the definition. I have a local ring of dimension D and a sequence of uh, modules of dimension D of maximal dimension is called lim co macaulay if there exists a system of parameters uh, x1 through xd uh, such that uh, this limit uh, is zero. So roughly speaking, what you want, you want the kazoo homology of, uh, of the modules, you want the kazoo homology of mn uh, with respect to this system of parameters uh, grows relative slowly compared with the minimal number of generators of this module. Okay, so you want this to be zero for all bigger i, for, sorry, for, for all i bigger than zero. Okay. And so, so once you have a definition like this, the first question that uh, you wanted to ask is that, so is this independent of the choice of the system of parameters? And the answer is yes. So uh, if this condition holds for one system of parameters, uh, then it holds for every system of parameters. Turns out this is not, not an obvious result, okay? And also uh, if R is a domain, uh, and in fact, you can, instead of putting on the minimal number of generators on the denominator, uh, we can put the rank instead of the minimal generators. So this is also not obvious, but it turns out it doesn't matter. Okay, so this, of course, the what are the examples of stuffs like this? So if you have a maximal co macaulay module over R, so then I claim the constant sequence is a lean co macaulay sequence, because for maximal co macaulay modules, all the numerators will be zero because the because they are co macaulay, the, 
there's no higher kazoo. So this is an obvious condition for if M is maximal co-mercality. And so uh, we can construct them at least in characteristic P, if you have an F finite local ring of characteristic P, so which is a F finite means of the Frobenius of the finite map is a very mild assumption. So then you can just take the take MN to be the, the push forward of the Frobenius, which is if R is reduced, it's just isomorphic to R1 over P to the N. So this forms a lim Macaulay sequence. So this is a, actually it's a reformulation uh, of a result of Shankar Dada and Paul Roberts, and also follows from tight closure theory. And so our, our original motivation uh, to introduce this uh, lim Macaulay sequence is to study the Sarah's conjecture. We show that if, if uh, 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 complete local domains of mixed characteristic admits lim Macaulay sequence, then Sarah's positivity conjecture holds. So uh, for lim Macaulay sequence, the most interest is to construct them for uh, mixed characteristic rings. Okay, but this is not the main topic for today, so let me just skip this. So, and for the rest of this talk, we also need a weaker variant of lim Macaulay sequence. So let me go back to this definition. So this definition we have, we put conditions on the length of the higher kazoo homology modules uh, compared with the minimum number of generators. So instead of putting conditions on all the higher kazoo, you can just put conditions on the first kazoo, for example. And an even weaker notion is that uh, we just put condition on the first higher order characteristic. So here's a definition. So this sequence MN uh, of maximal dimension, again, is called weakly lim Macaulay if there exists a system of parameters such that the first higher order characteristic of MN is, is relatively small compared with the growth of the minimum number of generators. Okay, here, chi one is the, the first higher order characteristic. We should put the alternating sum of all the higher uh, kazoo homology modules. Again, uh, this is independent of the choice of the seasonal parameters. And if R is domain, you can use the rank instead of the uh, minimum number of generators in the inner denominator. Uh, and it's clear that any lim Macaulay sequence is weakly lim Macaulay in this sense, because uh, if, if, well, this is, this, is, this is really obvious, but it turns out they are not equivalent. So this is indeed a weaker notion, okay? And a consequence of all these facts is the following lemma. So uh, if uh, R mod M is infinite, if you have an infinite residue field, then uh, these modules uh, is a weak, weakly lim Macaulay sequence, then the uh, multiplicity of this sequence eventually gonna beat the minimum number of generators of this sequence. So remember, we proved actually if, if, you, if you have a maximum co Macaulay module, then the multiplicity is always bigger than or equal to the generator, okay? So this lemma is roughly speaking, is saying that uh, this weak lim co Macaulay sequence is asymptotically, it behaves like an honest maximum co Macaulay module. Okay, so asymptotically, the multiplicity is gonna beat the minimum number of generators. Uh, so the proof, uh, let me sketch it. So you take a minimum reduction of the maximum ideal. And uh, so we already know that the multiplicity can be computed uh, as the order characteristic. Uh, but then the weekly lim co macaulay assumption now kicks in. You apply this to this minimum reduction of, uh, of M. So all the higher terms in this, or, or the, this, this chi one in this here, so they are, they are little O compared with the minimum number of generators. So all the higher, the higher order characteristic does not contribute when you compute the limit. So asymptotically, this limit tends to, you can just use the first term in the order characteristic, which is the zeroth kazoo, which is the length of MN modulo X times MN. And this is obviously bigger than equal to one because, right, because this is obvious. Okay, and so, uh, so now we can define a uh, uh, lim uh, sequence. So here's the definition, uh, a sequence of uh, modules UN is called uh, lim Urich or weakly lim Urich. If first of all, I want them to be lim co or respectively weakly lim co 
And secondly, I want this limit of this ratio to be equal to one. So remember here, we show that for any weakly limit homocolor sequence, the, the, the limit is at least one. And here I want it to be equal to one. This is very much inspired by the definition of Urich modules because, so Urich modules means maximum Kumakali and this ratio, you, this ratio is equal to one for, for the single U. But here we're gonna relax that. We're not gonna require, this is actually equal to one term wise. We're just gonna require that the limit is equal to one. Okay, so this is an asymptotic version of uh, these uh, Urich uh, modules. And so obviously, um, if you have a Urich module over R, then the constant sequence is a Lim Urich sequence, right? Because first of all, they are maximum, so Urich modules are maximum Kolmogorov, so the constant sequence is a Lim Kolmogorov sequence. And then secondly, this, you know, desired asymptotic, you know, uh, uh, condition is precisely, you know, it's going to be satisfied if you have a Urich module because for Urich module, this ratio is constantly one. Okay, so that's that's precisely the Urich condition. Okay, so therefore the following is a generalization of the observation of Hoxer unity and Hainer. So I let uh, R to S be a flat local extension. I try to make this uh, more precise. Suppose R mod uh, P admits a weakly Lim Urich sequence for each minimal prime of P uh, of maximal dimension. So then the Lex uh, conjecture holds, then the multiplicity of R is less than or equal to the multiplicity of S. So let's sketch the proof of this result. It's, 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 it's almost followed from the same line as the observation of uh, Hoxha unity and heinous. Is actually, uh, you just need to replace all these, all these, you know, just replace the Urich modules by this uh, Lim Urich sequence. So let's just uh, prove this. So first of all, by the standard argument we gave, so we may use the localization formula to reduce to the case, the two rings have the same dimension, and then you use the additivity property of the multiplicity, you can work with, uh, so in order to show like ER less than or equals to ES, you can work with each minimal prime of R, you know, uh, and then to, you, re, you basically reduce to the case R is a domain. You, you can work with R mod P to S mod P uh, for each minimal prime of the maximal dimension. But then uh, I came, we have a series of uh, equalities and inequalities uh, down here. Okay, so let's just do this slowly. So first of all, the multiplicity of R mod P uh, is the same as the multiplicity of the module divided by the rank of the module. So this is, this is actually a constant sequence here. So each term here is the multiplicity. And then the second inequality, uh, sorry, the second equality here is precisely the, uh, the, uh, the Urich condition, the asymptotic Urich condition, right? Because we, re we the weakly Lim Urich sequence means that uh, asymptotically, the multiplicity and the minimum number of generators, they are the same. Okay, so the limit equals to one. So instead of putting on the uh, multiplicity on the numerator, uh, we can put the minimum number of generators on the numerator. Okay, but then the minimum number of generators does not change under this flat extension. So this is honestly the same thing as this. But then the only non-trivial uh, thing that you, you need to argue a little bit is this inequality sign here, okay? And so that, so the only inequality uses the fact that, right, so you and remember these are weakly Lim Ruich. So in particular, uh, they are weakly Lim Kolmogorov, okay? And for weakly Lim Kolmogorov sequence, uh, if you base change to S, uh, they they are still weakly Lim Kolmogorov because the uh, the 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 order characteristic or the, the length of the kazoo homologies they are just getting multiplied by a by a by a constant which is the the length of the closed fiber. Okay, so for this we this is the only place that we use uh, we really require this reduction. We need the the two rings have the same dimension. Okay, so the closed fiber is an Artinian module. Okay, and so therefore this UN uh, base change to S mod PS uh, is gonna be a uh, weakly uh, Lim Kolmogorov sequence. And remember the previous lemma, this lemma that we proved 
for weakly limb coma poly sequence, the multiplicity is going to beat the minimal number of generators. Okay, so therefore you have this inequality. So the, so here I have the multiplicities, and here I have the minimal number of generators. So this is going to be bigger than that. Okay, but this one is the multiplicity of S mod P, because again this this just by the additivity formula. And you putting all these together now, uh, what we're gonna get uh, uh, is that if we want to prove lax conjecture for graded rings, uh, it remains to construct this weakly Lemurish sequence uh, for standard graded domains. Okay, so Rm is a standard graded domain over an infinite and f finite field of character P, then R admits a weakly Lemurish sequence. Uh, so, so for the last perhaps like 10 or 15 minutes of the talk, let me uh, sketch the, this construction uh, when the ring, uh, when R is additionally cone Macaulay and the residue field K is perfect, okay? So the proof is, is, is less technical in this case. Uh, and, oh, and by the way, I should say in this case, when R is cone Macaulay, uh, we can actually construct uh, the constructed Sequence are actually Lemurish, so they are not not only weakly Lemurish, but they are actually Lemurish. Okay, so there are there are four steps. So let me first uh, do step one. So we need some setup. So I let T n be this uh, segregate product. So k x one y one, k x two y two, and segregate with k x and y n be the segregate product of n copies of uh, the polynomial in two variables. So this is Geometrically, this is the affine cone of the product of n projective lines. Okay, so in particular, Tn has dimension n plus one. Okay, and now I let, so let me remind you, so I fix P. P is the, uh, the characteristic of the field, which is positive. I take a high, a large power of P, so which is Q, Q equals the P to the E. So eventually we're gonna vary this Q. So you should think of this Q being very, very large compared with N. And so we set this WQN uh, to be this uh, separate product, but it's still a separate product of these KXYs, uh, but we have to do this interesting twist or, or this shifts, okay? So KX1Y1 separate product with KX2Y2 shifted by Q and then KX3Y3 shifted by two Q and the last one I shifted by a minus one times q. Okay. Oh, by the way, segregate product means I take out the you know in this ring the uh, you know uh, it's a graded ring and the elements are uh, is generated by monomials uh, whose degree in all these x i y i are the same. Okay. So just take out the degree degree. Uh, so for example, the degree uh, degree m piece of T n. It's gonna be you'll take the degree n piece of this one, take the degree n piece of this one, take the degree n piece of this one, and then you take the product. Okay. Okay, so I have this funny uh, uh, modules, uh, twisted modules. So this is a module over Tn, and then I'm gonna pick a northern normalization of Tn. So I pick, remember Tn has dimension n plus one, and so I can take uh, z1 uh, up to zn plus one to be general. Uh, degree one elements inside Tn, uh, such that uh, An to An, which is this standard polynomial ring to Tn, uh, this is a northern normalization. Okay, and so here I guess we are implicitly using the the uh, the, the field here is is uh, is infinite. Maybe. <clears throat> okay, uh, and so we want to view this W W modules W Q N as graded module over An. Okay, so this is the first step in this constru construction. And these Ws will be our building blocks for this uh, lean Burich sequence. So now let's uh, go to step two. So now let's back to the setup of the theorem. So I have a standard graded domain over uh, infinite uh, finite field of characteristic P uh, over, let's say over a perfect infinite field K of characteristic P. And so uh, I can, choose a northern normalization of R, I, 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 I let Z1 up to Zd be general uh, degree one forms of R. 
And so uh, I formed the polynomial ring Z1, uh, K adjoining Z1 to ZD. So this lives inside R and this is a normal normalization. Okay. And so now we can identify this ring A with the ring AD minus one in step one. Okay. Remember here, I have a sequence of rings AN. So after this identification, I have this uh, funny modules W, WQD minus one uh, over A, right? Because we have all these WQN as graded modules over AN. So in particular, WQD minus one, these are gonna be graded modules over A. And now, so I can take this tensor, tensor product. So this is still a graded module over R. Well, this is a graded module over A, but then uh, it's gonna be a module over R. And now I'm gonna set this uh, UE uh, to be, so this is the uh, key construction. I'm gonna take this graded module, okay? I'm gonna take the degree minus one piece modulo Q, and then I'm gonna push forward on the Frobenius, okay? And the claim is that this is the desired uh, lim Wurich sequence over R, okay? And so let me explain the terminology a little bit here. Uh, for an n-graded or, or z-graded R module M. So this notation M minus A modulo Q. So this means I take out all the degree piece of M that is congruent to negative A modulo Q. So I take the direct sum of OJ of M in degree minus A plus QJ. And of course, once I do this operation, I'm gonna kill the R module structure on M. So in general, this M minus A mod Q is not necessarily an R module. It's going to be a module over the Veronese subring, but it's not going to be an R module itself. But after this Frobenius push forward, this UEs will be R modules because of the ETH Frobenius push forward. Okay, so this is crucial. This construction only works in Carson P because we need the Frobenius. Okay, and so now uh, we're going to verify. So we're going to prove our claim here. We're going to prove these modules are lim Wurich sequence. Okay, so there are two things we have to check. We first verify that this sequence is uh, lim coma Okay, so remember we have this assumption that uh, R is coma Cauley ring. So we knew that as a uh, as a module over 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 A, R is finite free. So as a graded module, R is just isomorphic to A twisted by minus A one direct sum up to A twisted by minus A S, where S where S is the rank of R over A. And all these twists are non-negative because, because R only lives in non-negative degree. Okay, so we so R as a graded A module is actually free. And so therefore, if you look at the definition of UE, so we have uh, we have this W modules, and then we base change to R. But now R is a direct sum of copies of A. So as A modules. So this UE is just isomorphic to a direct sum of copies of the push forward of the of all these W modules in in this you know certain degree piece. Okay, so it's a direct sum i goes from one to s uh, WQD minus one in degree minus one minus AI modulo Q, and then you push forward on the Frobenius. Okay, so this isomorphism is as graded module. And so now we want to show this UE, our lim macaulay sequence over R, and I claim it is enough to show each individual term is a lim macaulay sequence over A. So this is a pretty easy observation because uh, it's actually a general fact which follows from the definition that if you have a module finite extension A to R and a sequence of R module is lim macaulay if and only if they are lim macaulay as A module, because you can use the system parameters coming from A. To, uh, to compute, to, uh, to verify the lim coma Cauley condition, okay? So, it, so it, it immediately comes down to check that all these Frobenius push forward of, of all these W modules in this degree is gonna be a lim coma Cauley module over this regular ring A, okay? And so now uh, we're gonna invoke a, a local cohomology criterion for lim coma Cauley sequence, remember, uh, lim coma Cauley sequence means the higher Kazuo homology are, are bounded or like are controlled by the minimal number of generators or by the rank. So now the local cohomology criterion says it is actually enough to control the lengths of the lower local cohomology modules. So this follows from a 
spectral sequence argument. And so this particular applies to our case here because in our case, so all these modules, uh, all these W modules uh, are finite free. They are actually co macaulay on the puncture spectrum. So their lower local cohomology modules all have finite length. And similar for this, for this thing after you push forward by the Frobenius. So whatever the local, whatever the, you know, this local cohomology criterion is. So I wanted to say that in this case, to check this sequence are lim co macaulay it is enough to show that the length of the lower local cohomology module of these things are controlled by the rank of these modules over A, okay? But now we can uh, compute this uh, uh, length and ranks directly. So they are not very difficult, but it's sort of a bit tedious. I'm gonna omit the, uh, the details. So the rank of these modules over A turns out to be D minus one factorial times Q to the D minus one. And the length of all these lower local cohomology modules, we can actually write down the precise formulas, but I don't really care. It turns out they grow as little O of Q to the D minus one. So in particular, you see the rank is gonna beat the length of the lower local cohomology modules. So that uh, shows uh, these sequence are lim co macaulay Okay, so I want to emphasize that uh, this step doesn't work if R is not co macaulay because then the, these, uh, you know, if R is not co macaulay then these UEs are not direct sum of these Ws. So uh, they won't be co macaulay on a puncture spectrum. So the local cohomology may not have finite length. So this is where we actually use uh, the co macaulay assumptions because we can invoke the local cohomology criterion of uh, Bad Hoxter and, and myself. Okay, and now finally, let's check the Lim Rurich uh, condition. And so, since this Z uh, forms a minimum reduction of the maximum ideal, so in order to compute the multiplicity of UE with respect to this maximum ideal, they are the same as the multiplicity of UE computed, you know, I use the Z instead because M is integral over Z. Okay, but these are you know, the Z is generates the maximum ideal of A. So E, so the second one is just, you are just computing the multiplicity of UE as an A module, but A is regular. So the multiplicity of any module over A is just the rank of that module over A, okay? But we already computed the rank, right? The rank is D minus one factorial times Q to the D minus one. I have S copies of this. So the rank is S times D minus one factorial times Q to the D minus one. Okay, and so now on the other hand, so now we have to compare the rank with the minimum number generators of UE. And now, now, now I, I want to make a elementary but crucial observation, which is that I claim the minimum number generators of UE is at least as much as, I mean, is at least as big as the dimension of this, this uh, push forward on the Frobenius of this, of this graded module in degree Q minus one only. So this means the degree Q minus one piece of this module. And of course, since I assume K is perfect for, for simplicity, you can just drop the Frobenius push forward because K is per perfect. So the vector space dimension is the same regardless of whether you compute it over K one over P or, or K. So this is, this is the same. So, uh, well, it's, this is true because remember the, uh, the minimum number generators is UE modulo M times UE. But the elements in the maximum ideal of R, they, under the Frobenius push forward, they're gonna act by their Qth powers. So they cannot hit any degree Q, uh, less than or equal to Q minus one pieces of this module because this module only lives in non-negative degree. Okay, so this is a very crucial observation. So in order to bound the minimum number generators, I only need to compute or bound the dimension of this uh, vector space, okay? And so now finally, what is this dimension uh, R tensor A of these W modules in degree Q minus one, okay? So R is, you know, a graded module over A. So this is just the dimension of a direct sum of this, of this thing, okay? And we can compute this thing directly, right? So recall these W modules, W Q D minus one is KX one Y one, segregated with KX two Y two, twisted by Q, and then up to separate product kx dyd shifted by d minus two times q. So this is our definition of w, wq d minus one. And so 
follow the definition of segue product, I want to study the degree Q minus one minus AI piece of this module. And how does that gonna go? I'm gonna take the degree Q minus one minus AI piece of each piece, and then I take the product, okay? So now the dimension of that is gonna be the dimension Q minus one minus AI piece of this piece, which is Q minus AI, and the Q minus one minus AI piece of this second module, which is gonna be two Q minus AI. So this just, just monomial, count monomials in polynomial rings, which is pretty straightforward. And then da 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 up to uh, d minus one q minus a i. So I take the product of all these, and I keep in mind that I'm I'm actually I'm actually varying q. So e is varying. But all these a i's uh, doesn't change because a i's are just coming from r. So they doesn't change when q changes. So asymptotically, you can ignore all these a i's. So the highest term here is precisely d minus one d minus one factorial times uh, times q to d minus one, okay, which uh, which matches with the multiplicity, okay. So I have s copies of of this. Uh, so asymptotically, the dimension grows as s times d minus one factorial times q to d minus one, which is precisely the multiplicity, okay, which is the multiplicity we just compute. So therefore, it follows that this limit, uh, the the ratio of the multiplicity divided by the minimal generators, is bounded by uh, the multiplicity divided by the vector space dimension of this degree piece, which is one. Um, but then the limit is equal to one since it is always at least as big as one because these sequence, we already proved these sequence are linked to Macaulay. So uh, there's no other choice for the limit. The limit has to be one, okay? So that completes the proof uh, in the Cole Macaulay case. For us, I'm, I, I'm hiding the technicalities here, but I hope this at least show you the the core ideas in this in this uh, construction. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop here. Sorry, I I run out of time. So.